The shot placement you see here in this video is what we determined the shot was after the track. When he originally called, he had convinced me it was a gut liver shot out of a saddle, real high in a tree, at like 15, 20 yards, and originally he said it was a decent sized buck. Find it. Find it. I start my dog at the hit site. The hunter told me he has not tracked this deer at all yet. He knew the shot was further back than he'd liked and wanted a dog immediately. This hunter was hunting very, very far back on public land. I mean, two miles back with an e-bike. We're definitely on it. I'm getting blood, so you can come. Hunter was using a compound bow with a two-blade fixed broadhead. It deflected off a limb, and that's why the shot went further back. When he found the arrow, the broadhead was missing because it hit the ground real hard. We think it was stuck in the ground somewhere. And the arrow had grit all over it. I think that was from dirt. He thought it was from gut matter. We ended up waiting 24 hours to track it. I also was a little lazy and didn't get up as early as I should have. And we didn't start tracking until about 10 a.m. with how far back it was and the hike in. You know, it took us quite a while. So I didn't know what I know now about scent and how you need to get there really early in the morning, especially on these hot days. That way it's a lot easier on your dog, and you're not sure how long it's going to take to track the deer. So if it ends up being a longer time, you have that much longer to keep working before you overwork your dog. My dog takes the track amazingly, goes down and up this valley, and then we start to find more blood regularly. Uh, I call out the blood and try to either have them mark it or I mark it in case that is our last blood and we have to restart here. I got blood here at this tree I'm at. Can you mark it? I'll throw paper down actually. Got it marked. Yeah, it's right around that area. Um, blood's probably before toilet paper, but it's there. I got a lot more blood. Again, try to remember to mark your last blood with toilet paper on your apps. I know when your dog's walking, it's hard to throw something down or stop your dog and mark it on the app. But it really will help you if that is your last blood. Because you can go another four, six, eight hundred yards and not see anything and decide to restart. And good luck trying to find that last blood in the midst of everything, especially when it's one small drop. But we do find more blood as we go. This is what my dog's alert looks like. She'll come to a stop, head down, really into something. Sometimes it's a big puddle of blood. Sometimes it's one speck I can't even find. But I know that this alert is telling me there's something here she really likes. So I always check to see what Hang it is. Hang on for a second. It could be one piece of hair, but that tells you you're on the track. We got a standing wound bed. So there was a decent amount of blood right here in what we call a standing wound bed. The reason we call it a standing wound bed is there's a lot of blood, guts, whatever it might be in there. And it doesn't look like the deer laid down to try and relax or fix itself or die. It just stood there and basically leaked stuff out of it. And something that you should do that I did not do, lesson learned, is inspect these beds, inspect the blood. Is it dark? Is it light? Is there gut matter in there? Um, when my dog is sitting there for a while just looking at it and her head doesn't come up, I couldn't see what she was doing. I thought she was smelling. And I walked up and I seen that there was blood, and then we just continued the track. I should have spent time investigating that area to learn what we were looking at. And from here, my dog starts to really struggle. And I really wonder if the hunter actually went and tracked it, and this is where he lost blood. And now my dog is tracking his boots. At the time of the track, I'm not thinking this. I'm thinking that it's just a scent pool or the scent is in like the wind scent of it is kind of coming down this hill and she's basically wind scenting instead of tracking. This is just my inexperience showing because now after this, basically this tracking year, I know that's not the case and I can see a lot more. These videos really help. So make sure you record your tracks. It'll help you a bunch. Your deer was here for a long time. This is a huge simple for her. She is trying her best. 
with it being a hill, that sand went down that way last night. That's why she keeps dragging me this way. She knows she missed something, she's coming back to you to reset herself. So here my dog realizes she missed something and she resets herself, which is awesome, I love it. Don't let your hunters move around or move out of her way. The dog will work around the hunters, have them stay put. She actually goes back and looks for a backtrack right here. And when she realizes that there is no backtrack that she can find, she goes to Last Blood again and continues to track. In hindsight, where she goes right here is correct. But with how my last track went, which is my last video I made before this one, which was not good, um, she didn't do very well tracking on that one. I didn't have a lot of confidence in her. And without seeing blood, I just thought she was off searching. Just kind of lost trust in her, which is sad. I mean, it's it was one track that kind of went bad because of distractions. And she still did a great job, which is I had high emotions. And as a tracker with high emotions, it really will affect your ability to work as a team. So here I was talking about resetting her. I'm gonna, have you, I'm gonna have you stay there until I spot blood again because we might do a reset there. Um, I'm not confident she's on, I'm confident she's searching right now. Alright, so that's really sad. We probably only went 50 yards and I'm already thinking of doing a reset. That's not good. You should really go probably over 600 yards before even thinking about doing a reset unless you can truly see your dog is not tracking. And it really shows that beginning of the season. I really could not read my dog as well as I thought I could, and I didn't trust my dog as much as I should have. But it's a lesson learned, and I feel a lot better now at the end of the season than I do watching my beginning of season tracks. Right here, my dog shows an alert. I talk about these in most of my videos. They're pretty obvious for my dog. She's tracking, tracking, tracking. And then boom, she stops, head down, really like sniffing something. And after she sat there for quite a while, as you see, I decided to check it. And she's really trying to pull the scent out of the ground or, you know, find that individual thing she's really smelling. Yeah, it's right there. So I go and check it. It ends up being deer hair. So it shows that she is kind of on it. But I've seen a lot of beds in this area. And I was kind of convinced it wasn't his deer's hair and it was just because there's a lot of beds in the area and some other deer was picking up themselves that doesn't make sense to me now thinking about it um just shows i wasn't trusting my dog and believing she could do it and it's kind of kind of sad that hair right here and i don't see blood but she's showing me that she thinks there's blood right here you want us to follow or hang back hang back so from here, my dog actually goes down the valley, up the other side of the valley, back down to the valley, runs the valley out a little ways, then goes back to the hit site and restarts herself. I think she was tracking his boots, um, if I'm being honest. He told me it was a clean track and said he didn't want to mess, mess up because he's used dogs before, so he kind of knows the deal. So he didn't go stomping around, but... Watching this video, I, I really think he did go stomping around. He had knowledge that the valley had water in it from, he said, prior scouting earlier in the month. We had a huge drought this year. It was 9 degrees today in this track. I just don't see it being believable now when I watch it. So you really got to take what these hunters say with a grain of salt because watching this video now, I'm not convinced. She reset herself. Just stay there. Hey, you didn't tell me to start on X, did you? Now she's ready to get to work. Find it. Okay. Come on, figure it out. Find it. Thank you so much for everything you do. Ah, love you. I love you. So what you just saw there was when we got back to the spot with all the blood, we went ahead and took a water break and did an official restart. 
which for us is downstaying my dog for a while. And that's also my wife right there. She's uh, awesome, carrying a heavy book bag on tracks with me when she comes to kind of take the load off me when we're walking. From here, my dog tracks pretty well until she drops down to this valley. And she ran the valley out pretty far. And I saw the creek the guy was talking about uh, and all the water in it. This is also part of the reason I think she was tracking his boots. Um, he just he he knew that there was water down there, and we're kind of in a drought, so it's kind of odd. But um, after that, I pull her back, and before we dropped in the valley, she showed good tracking behavior. So I was gonna kind of take her back that way and see what she did. And as we did, um, we did find uh, more blood, and I'll show that here. So I call her off that valley down there because she got in the water to cool off. She kind of showed disinterest. She was kind of going left to right, which a lot of times is like a searching behavior or doing circles. And I let her do it for a while to see if she takes any way out, any like path out, and she never did. So I pulled her back. As we were coming back up the hill towards the restart spot, she alerts to me. To be honest, we're half a day into a track. It kind of annoyed me because I thought she just found some rabbit poop or something. Uh, but it actually ended up being something of importance, and I mark it here. And on a side note, this spot is actually in line with the hair that we found uh, earlier in the video. So it really was something here. So you just saw that we marked it with toilet paper because I knew it was something of importance. But I was thirsty, I was hot, I didn't have any more water on me, and the wife had the rest of the water in the water in the book bag. But as you can see, I'm kind of fighting her, but still letting her do her thing, because I'm just really irritated. But she's really showing me there's something here I should be checking out, so I'm taking it serious. Come on. Come on, Diesel. You want to make some noise? I think I'm pretty close to you. I got blood. I got blood. She's been alerting the whole time and I have not seen it. I got blood. Come up here. Follow where you left the first time. That's a good girl. Hell yeah. Fuck, they gave me some photo confidence. Find it, baby girl. Find it. Get to work. So we do a water break and then we do a proper restart. And once we do the proper restart, she takes off. And we're still pretty much in the same area, but you'll see here in a second. She starts eating something on an alert. So I go over there to try and see what it is and tell her to drop it, leave it, whatever. And it's already gone. So whatever evidence she had that the deer was here, it's now gone. <laughs> That's a dog for you, though. So from here, she actually takes me down the valley again. Runs it out for a little ways, turns around, goes back towards the hit side or back towards the last blood. Then she goes up on the other side and she kind of searches there. We jump a deer actually and it takes off running. Didn't look injured. Don't think it was his deer. Never saw antlers, just saw a white tail. So at this point, when we end up back at the hit site, we take the track back to the hunter and to my wife. Sit down, take a water break. And I decide to try and restart her one more time. Now, when I go to restart her, and you'll see this right here, she just stops and kind of gives me a look. And I knew she was done. It was 90 degrees. We've been doing this for five or six hours. My dog is beat. So from this point, we actually leave, go get lunch, and come back. I was going to have a more veteran team come out and track it because I was convinced or worried it was a gut shot deer that we were going to leave in the woods. He was unable to come out. We went back after lunch um, with the dog, got a break. She actually extended it another three, four hundred yards with one speck of blood and then just kind of lost it. Um, as we were walking out, I kind of heard from him some more of the truth of it being a monster buck and he was kind of hoping we would lead it, lead him to it, still in a bed, alive, and possibly get another shot off on this buck. So very aggravating, but 
Um, a lot of lessons learned in this one. And uh, I would say that this is probably my most aggravating track of the year, my longest track of the year. And actually from here, we start getting more recoveries, which was nice. So biggest low, and then we end up going into some good times, which I'll be posting those videos soon. Guys, please like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, subscribe. That's really what I need help with. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, any advice.